All right, so we got the recording here going. And then what I'll do is I'll also trim it and stuff. So, but hey, welcome to the Gopher CEO community, everyone. Thanks so much for uh, being here, for watching us, and for just seeing some of the stories that we've been able to put together. Today, I have a special guest because she's local. Uh, I kind of just randomly had a business card in a pile of business cards. And in this venture, being an entrepreneur and starting something new, you know, you just got to call people and just say hello. And she was so kind to give me a few minutes initially. I followed up again because she's a busy lady, owns a business, and then I and then we really connected. Um, you know, she has a, a, an incredible salon in the Aurora, Illinois area. I live currently in the Naperville area and have an office in Oakbrook. So, you know, uh, sometimes people don't meet until you make that effort to really just extend a hand and, and make a call. So, um, excited to have her on. Excited to share the story. You know, in Go for CEO, we talk about business owners that are startups to 25 million in revenue. And we talk about the marketing, the organization, the scaling, you know, the, the just how do they start the business? How can you learn from them to be a part of that community? So uh, welcome, Kayla. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Hello. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Hi. So, okay, no, thank you for coming on. So, so yeah, as you know, one of the things I, I see that the brand, right? Organized Chaos right on your shirt yep. uh, which is a, a huge part. I love it. I love it. You know, and it's a huge my part. My daughter drew that. What's that? My daughter drew that. She made that for me. Oh, wow. And which, how old is that one? She's the oldest. So uh, she was 13 when she did it. Okay. Awesome. Right? So, so she's got that, that uh, seed of greatness and entrepreneurship as well. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. Is she now uh, into graphics as well or like? Um, she does makeup and lashes. Okay. She knows how to do hair, but that's not her preference. So she's taking classes to do lashes and she's up here sometimes doing that. Awesome. Really? Well, really cool. So, so let's start with a little bit of your background, Kayla, and just kind of sharing, you know, uh, a little bit of where you came from. I know in our pre-call, uh, you shared a little bit about your voyage of kind of being scared to start your own business, but share a little bit about your background and then how we'll get started. And then, you know, these interviews are free flowing for me. I'll learn kind of what you're saying and I'll guide you through the next following uh, question. So. Go ahead and okay. share a little bit. Okay, so I am the only child of my mother's. Um, uh, she raised me by herself. Um, I've been in Aurora pretty much since I was about four years old. I moved out here in the first grade. Oh. Hold on one second. We lost you there. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I moved out here in the first grade and pretty much have been here since. I've moved away for maybe seven months at one point, but pretty much Aurora's been where I've been um, my entire life. Awesome. Um, I have three daughters. Um, so starting out, I, I went to Wabonzi High School, graduated from there in 97. I'm sorry. And thought I was going to be a nurse or something like that in the medical field and um, ended up starting a family early. So I ended up being a wife and mother of three uh, daughters, which, I mean, is a, doing a lot of hair to begin with. Um, I had a group of about three or four girlfriends that also had daughters. So that's kind of how I ended up doing hair um, to begin with <laughs> as a necessity. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I worked in customer service for about 10 years uh, for different companies, for Ameritech, for U.S. Cellular, Allstate. Um, I worked in HR. I did a lot of different types of jobs. Um, I worked as a scheduler for a home health company. Um, nothing really kind of fit for me, especially on like an income uh, level because I was paying so much in child care that it was like I was working to pay the babysitter so um some friends were like yeah maybe you should just start doing hair a little bit more and I kind of risked it went to school um actually I ended up going to school a total of three times before I finished <laughs> um because when you have kids that comes first um so about 10 years into grad after graduating high school I decided to do hair full time um and it's just gone from there. I started my own business in 2016. 
I'm going into the fifth year. Yeah. I started in Oswego at um, off of Douglas and 30. Um, I opened up with a cousin of mine. Um, her name is Amber Robinson. She passed away in 2018. Oh, wow. Um, and really, it was just me and her. So, you, you know, you, you started it with your cousin. Did you guys lease uh, a space? How was that kind of, did you set up a, an actual corporation or how did you structure yes. your, your uh, entity? So my mother has always been the one that pushed me, pushed me. She was the one that was like, you're ready. You need to do it. Um, I worked in a salon for probably about six or seven years before um, we decided to have, you know, my own location. Okay. So she's been like, the paperwork lady like she she went to college um at a royal university um graduated from there she's done a lot of uh courses and certifications she's like a, a techie um so she did like my paperwork as far as um getting registered with the state um getting a logo getting um you know that the background stuff done for me um we did get some help from the women's business development center um mm. I think that's a part of the city of commerce for city of Aurora when we opened our first location. Um, and we've just gone from there. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, so, so mom's been not only an inspiration, uh, a mentor, uh, but kind of pushed you uh, and to kind of, you know, get your wings spread, right. To your own Eagle. Uh, right. So she me, made me comfortable. She yeah. made, she made me comfortable. And then having a member next to me made it easier for me. To not do it by myself. Um, so, yeah. I love it. I love it. I mean, you know, that's the story of many entrepreneurs, you know, many people that, you know, are thinking of this idea. Maybe you're just reserved because you know, you're learning the skill. You, you talked about it, right? You were in these other jobs that really didn't fulfill you, didn't get you where you wanted to monetarily. You're a mom. So that's number one. But, um, but you, you, you kind of, pivoted you got the education you got it in you got six years in and now you, you got pushed into you know starting your own thing so you know obviously you shared something very important uh losing your cousin uh, a couple years into business um you know i had an interview with a gal named marie that uh had her partner uh her business partner and husband uh passed away seven months into business and yeah. it's obviously a, a tragic scenario w what were some things uh, just to kind of cut into a little bit of that while you're in this business you're it sounded like about two years into your business and you lose your partner lose a cousin lose a family member what was the transition and, and how did you cope with business did you have some in uh operating things that you know kept you afloat uh, to be able to stay in business or was it kind of like you just dealt with it and then kind of went right back to working um I think that she she had already kind of wrenched out a little bit and started doing other things. Oh. Um, she was she was driving a school bus during the day, so she wasn't there on an everyday basis. So as far as that goes, um, like the operations, I had a couple other people that were working for me at that point. Um, but that didn't change the fact that we started that together, which is part of why when my lease was up there, I was ready to move, start somewhere fresh. Um, because it was hard just going in there every day. Cause I used to call her first thing in the morning, like, hurry up, you know, what are you doing? You live closer than me. How am I beating you here? Like every day. So, um, just having, I guess, strong family members around to help get past that. I mean, it's really not nothing that you really get past, but it's motivated me amongst yeah. other things. To honor her, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and, I have her, I keep her picture at my station. Oh, we're getting a tour, but oh, oh, wow. Inspir inspiring, too. What, what a beautiful guest. Thanks. So thank you so much for sharing that. You know, so, you know, obviously that's a tough time and a tough period and, you know, all of us that lose someone, I lost my mom in 2014, now six years. It just doesn't even seem real that it's been six years already. Um, but, you know, as an entrepreneur you're, and, and life, you're just going to have these situations. You're going to have ups and downs. Um, 
you know, tell me a little bit about kind of just how you started ramping up, you know, over the last two years, you know, from 2018 now to 2020, it sounds like you then uh, leased your own new place in Aurora. Um, you had already established your corporation. You, you got your logo going. You got the brand going. What were some things that you did to really kind of solidify the brand of who you are and then uh, go, go from there? Um, since the beginning, I've been doing a lot of community service. Um, now, one thing was I, when we did open, it was my mother, myself. I was married at the time. He was the barber and my cousin. Um, I have been able to, I guess, Facebook my way through a lot of things. Um, I know a lot of people. I have a pretty large family. My mother is one of 14 children. Okay. Um, some of which live here, have children here. You know, she has first cousins here. So I've always um, known a lot of people in this area. So it's always been easy for me to build because um, people are able to see your work. Word of mouth is huge. Like that's the majority. You know, so between I said that between the three of us, myself, my ex husband, and my cousin, we pretty much knew everybody in Aurora. I felt like. <laughs> Wow. So that helped with building in the beginning um, and then mostly word of mouth after that. Um, what sets me aside is I'm more natural than a lot of people. There are a lot of stylists that only deal with um, chemically treated hair because uh, it's, it's on average easier to deal with um, than natural hair. But we're at a point where um, for African-Americans, we're at like 75, 80% of us are natural now and not treating our hair chemically. Um, one thing that I, I was taught in natural hair school, because I actually went to natural hair school. Um, one thing that I was taught is that, you know, some of these chemicals have been shown to cause cancer. And I have cancer in my family. I've lost um, an uncle to cancer already. I have other family members, um, close. Like I said, my mother has 13 brothers and sisters. So I have other aunts and uncles. And then my father um, also has family members that have been affected by it. So that was a huge concern for me. At that point, I already wasn't using chemicals to do people's hair. But at that point, I was, at, I was actually discouraging people mm. and teaching them how to, you know, deal with their own hair and that it was healthier and it would grow better and showing the results. So that's why I started making oils and do, you know, I did a lot of research on essential oils. I made a lot of posts about that type of stuff. Um, you know, when we originally opened, that was my angle, it was natural and I've kind of stuck to that. I've gotten more natural as I've gone on with making the shampoo because originally I was not making my shampoo. Um, I sell the oils, they work. Um, there's some, like rosemary is a natural minoxidil, so for people that have issues with hair growth, um, you know, there's a concoction that I make. Each person has their own recipe. So that's kind of what sets it aside, and I think that's what makes the word of mouth get around quicker, because there's really not anyone else that's invested the money and time into that piece of it. Yeah, that's a lot of research and development that you put in, and, um, you know, so you started just with cutting and, and uh, I know you do like braids and all these types of things, right? Uh, part of the culture, right? Um, what, what, as you influence that side of things, were you doing, uh, like you said, videos? Uh, how did, how did the word of that organic side and, and uh, the natural side really kind of flourish? Uh, or is it just maybe the first few clients and they felt the difference compared to what they were using? Um, I would say I did go online and start making posts. I make videos showing people what I was doing. Um, I showed results. I would show like, okay, well, I started locks this day and this is a year later. And, you know, the hair is like here and it was up here. Like, that's huge. So people are like, what? You know, what is it that you're using? People want their hair to be healthy. They want it to grow. So I really haven't had to do a lot of anything outside of showing um, showing what I do. I have a lot of clients that have come to me for almost 10 years at this point. So I have a large amount of testimonials <laughs> in this area of people that may have even had issues with alopecia and things like that, whose hair has actually grown back 
So. Wow. That is awesome. I mean, so you're you're competing with the Rogaines and those types of people as well. I mean, just in a Rogaine uh, with Minoxidil. <laughs> I love it. I love there's it. So, there's a lot of natural ways to fix issues. A lot yes, of natural there, ways. There definitely is. Yeah, I've got some friends in the essential oil space, and they're always teaching me and sharing things on Facebook and stuff. And what a cool way to really kind of broaden your business, right? Uh, because obviously, just cutting hair or just doing uh, locks and braids and all that type of stuff could be, um, you know, constraining, right? You've got products. Right videos you've got teaching have you ever also spoken uh maybe at at seminars or these types of things to to get the word out as well um i would i actually i guess i wouldn't say it's a class but i did do a demonstration um oh, i'm trying to think of the name of the place it was a widely known place in chicago um jeff uh, a guy that i've known for some years that works with indigo which is a distributor um, had me do a demonstration on locks um, in Chicago. That's probably the only time that I've done anything outside of just teaching people here on site, you know, showing people that are new in, in the industry, like what I'm using, what techniques you can use, what not to do, those types of things. But I've not, I haven't really done like classes or, you know, seminars on my own showing, you know, what I use or what I do. Well, the, there might be a, another business venture uh, hidden in there. Those are sometimes the gems, right? As business owners, right, take someone else to just kind of look from the outside and go, wow, you know, I, and I do have an idea for you. We'll, we'll talk offline on it. But um, for that, that, that could really just be an offline kind of entity of itself. And, and it's really neat. Um, I work with some other people that do some things. Uh, but, you know, so tell us, you know, you, you're, you're gaining this ground, you're building this market get a new location, you know, is it still just yourself, uh, Kayla, or have you started to expand maybe late 18, 19, meaning bringing on new stylists, you know, how, how are you working that angle of your business and monitoring the cash flow and things of, of what you need to do? Well, when we moved to this location, it's bigger. So we did start doing retail. Um, my mother was working here with me. Uh, now she's you know, been working a full-time job, but in general, it, it varies with, um, the people that work here right now. I have a barber that works here. Um, but when I originally left to come over here, I had two stylists and a barber. So it kind of like, everybody is kind of like a free agent <laughs> when you, when you do hair. So Corona did not help. <laughs> I had, uh, two employees before that. Um, it's like, okay, should I stay here and pay, help pay for overhead or work from home and not pay anything and just keep all my money? You know, so it's, it's an industry where you have to want to be a public stylist. You know, it has to be a goal of yours for you to want to continuously pay to rent a spot. Um, because once you're licensed, I mean, you're licensed, you don't have to actually work in a salon. Mm. So, you so that, that fluctuates. It goes up and down. Um, here and there, I'll have an assistant that works for me. Um, I, I mean, I get help here and there, but as far as a stylist, it always just fluctuates. Right now, I just have myself and one other person that works here. So so those people are 1099, right? Uh, they're independent contractors? Yes, they're independent contractors. Okay, so nobody ever gets employed. Okay, uh, it's a learning site. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you see that in the salon industry, yeah, you get your licenses. It kind of relates to uh, realtors, right? Realtors get licensed, but they can yep. choose home. They can choose where they do business, or they could just be on their own uh, underneath a, a, a brokerage. Right. Deal. But um, and then we can have we have ten ninety nine, but then we also have you know, like I said, we sell retail as well. So you know, when somebody works for me with that, then that comes under me as um, you know, I'm paying them with the check, which is different mm-hmm. than people working for themselves because usually um, like there's a few different types of ways to run a salon when you have uh, it run booth rent based pretty much it's a flat rate that the person pays weekly and that's you know they collect their own funds Um, they just are required to pay whatever that booth rent is for the week Um, when some of the salons base everything off of a percentage which is different because 
you know, sometimes you're going to end up paying more, sometimes you're going to end up paying less, but either way, they're getting paid. Mm -hmm. So the company itself would have, or I would have to pay them for whatever traffic came in here and keep a portion of that. But if they didn't make any money, then that wouldn't be beneficial to me. So in as far as long as I've been working in the industry, I've been working on booth rent base because it just makes more sense to me. Um, it helps people strive, you know, because let's say you're paying $200 a week, you know, and you'd have to at least make that, you know, before you see any money. So you want to work a little bit harder, whereas you're not going to want to work hard if you're getting paid regardless of if you do anything or not. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a different type of motivation. It's high risk. Yeah. Because you have to, I mean, I'm not going to say that your image so much matters, but you can't just be somebody that nobody likes <laughs> because, you know, you, you won't make money that way. Um, no, it's, it's personality. I mean, there's a lot of personality in stylists. Uh, I know that the gal that does my hair, um, I'm very loyal to her, you know, uh, you know, and it's been, I've only had like three people in my life, I'm 44 years old, uh, yeah. when I was when I was younger, I had a guy named Uncle Bob. We had about 40 or 50 guys, our senior class, that we all went to him, one of my buddies. Oh, wow. And he would do it from his house, and he would get us faded all the time, just perfect every three days. As I got older, it's been every, like, two or three weeks, but I remember getting my hair cut every two, three days because I just wanted it perfect all the time and anything. So, but it's funny, <laughs> through Corona, I've actually uh, learned that I've got my Puerto Rican kind of waviness in the hair. It's kind of come out crazy because I'll just... <laughs> not do anything in the morning and it starts to curl yeah so it's uh wavier than i thought because i used to always blow dry it uh to get it straighter so but um neat neat so so that's uh, you know you're sharing a little bit about the marketing side you you kind of the operation side growing a little bit tell us a little bit about the clientele and at the end of the the, the video here I, I usually try to challenge people and share what is your value proposition of client experience employee engagement and operational excellence. But for right now, tell us a little about how you're gathering clientele. Has it just been truly only word of mouth? Do you consistently stay in the marketplace as Facebook? And I saw your Instagram. How are you really developing that on a daily basis, even though you have a, a loyal clientele already? Um, a lot of it is word of mouth. Um, I do get some, some people from Instagram. Some people add me from Snapchat, but Ultimately, it's still word of mouth because they're seeing it on someone else's story or somebody else is talking about it and tagging me or something like that. So um, it's just a new form of word of mouth now. It gets around a lot quicker. The Internet gets around way quicker than somebody calling and saying, hey, can you find her number for me? Or what's the name of the company? You know, um, it's just easier to request or type in organized chaos, boom. You know, I have a website, I have a Facebook page, I have my own personal Facebook page, um, and then I have Instagram and Snapchat. Um, people like to see, they like to see what you're doing. And I think the more that you show and the more, more transparent you are, the more that they trust your work. So I get a lot of people just from, hey, a friend of mine posted a video that you, you know, shared a video that you did. I want that style. Um, I get a lot of that. I also um, participate a lot in nonprofits. Okay. So I do activities sometimes, like during the summer, I'll do softball game. Um, I had uh, softball games that we did a couple years in a row. Um, the first year that we played, we were the winners. The women were. <laughs> All right. Um, so things like that where you're getting out there and people are getting to know your name, you know, people are tagging you in pictures from, you know, barbecues that you did and things like that. So, or seeing you at them. Um, I got a lot of clientele originally from doing a back to school event where I did hair for free all day, you know, and, you know, I got people that wanted to come and pay for my service at that point. So, um, I don't know. I think, the internet is huge right now because especially in these times, we're not really going places and seeing people anywhere as much. I don't try to, <laughs> you know, I try to stick to going to work, going home, going to work, going home. Um, so the internet is definitely huge. Facebook for me, mostly. I love it. I love it. You know, and, and yeah, it's changed the game, you know, maybe 20 years ago, 
or even 15 years ago, uh, you, you saw people spending more money advertising web mail or uh, mail mailbox like uh, coupons and stuff. I did see you on, uh, I think on Groupon, some other things, uh, just doing a little research on you. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it seems like really you've let that organic way of marketing, let your clients be out there in the marketplace, let them speak for you, uh, which, you know, is a really cool uh, way because obviously you're, you're lessening your, your expenses on, uh, on those types of things. And you're not giving away as much like on a Groupon. I know it could be a little bit costly uh, just to bring in a new client. What's your percentage? Do you know offhand the, the kind of the, the percentage of people that once they do have that first experience with you that they come back? I would say that it's pretty high. Um, I'm probably I'm probably at about 85, 90 percent. Wow. Okay. At least um, because a lot of what I do is something that is like a necessity. Um, well, I just started my locks. Uh, a couple months ago, but the majority of what I do now at this point is locks. When I originally started, the majority of my clientele was children because I was a braider. You know, that was what I did is I braided kids' hair because that's what I was used to. I braided my kids' hair, I braided my friends' kids' hair, but then I kind of evolved into the whole natural thing. Um, when you're starting a process like this, it's almost like it's literally a journey. So I'm kind of like, helping people through this is a tough process you know it's not totally accepted by the whole world you know it's like oh what's going on with your hair well this is the process I have to go through before it gets to the beautiful long hair that I'm looking for but um since this is mostly what I do I always have somebody that comes back within within the first 30 days at least oh okay um, and is this is something that you do every 30 days. Okay. So when you start the process, I get a lot of people that I actually started the process of. So they have been loyal clients to me every month for years. Wow. And, and uh, so just help educate me and, and, and the community uh, when they see this. So you're taking your natural hair uh, and it's called locks. So I wasn't as familiar with it. Um, and it's growing out. And then you're also maintaining it. Uh, in that relationship so that it gets longer and then you feed it, you, you, you give it nutrients and all the stuff that oh, you do. Exactly. And, and exactly. Then, um, our, it create our hair, our scalp already creates its own oils. So I kind of, I mix some aloe vera and some other things into it just to keep it healthy and keep it clean. Um, the maintenance, the majority of the maintenance portion of having locks is getting your hair thoroughly washed and retwisted. So, I mean, I'm, I don't have a, fr a fresh retwist or anything, but you see each individual piece okay. is twisted and maintained. When you have dreadlocks, yeah. they're, they're left to grow, to, to grow together and they turn into this big, you know, you see a lot of that in Florida, I guess. I guess a lot of my, Miami people have like the big chunky locks. They only have like three um, or dreadlocks. Um, locks are something that's washed, clean, maintained, twisted, styled, you know, kept to look good. But either way, it's still a journey because in the beginning, you have to go some time without doing anything to it. You have to just let it mat up and get dirty. You know, you're not wanting to wash it because you want it, you know, you want to get to a point where it's sticking together. Like I have, most of mine are like stuck together all the way to the end kind of hard to explain but oh, no, it's no. definitely a journey because it's a mental journey as well as a physical journey <laughs> sure. because you are outside and everybody's looking at you like what is wrong with your head but then as time goes on they're like wow I can't believe how pretty your hair is yeah I mean you have to go through a rough patch but once you get past that it's beautiful what a what a I mean I hope people just replay that last minute and a half or two because it's so uh, essential to think about even just in life, right? Your hair mm -hmm. is representing a, a journey uh, and the way that you decide to take that next formation of your life, the way you decided to recreate yourself from customer service and, and working in corporate America, your mom pushed you, and then you get into this other aspect, even though you were used to doing braids and became that person in the salon, now you're starting to, you know, you started this journey a few years ago and you've become uh, really the, the expert in your area. So, wow, that's really awesome. I mean, I appreciate you 
share. And then I think that's where the value is, right? So um, definitely. Tell us a little bit about kind of the operations. Uh, you, you had mentioned quickly that your mom is kind of the finance person or, or kind of the, the back end office person. How do you guys work together for you to be the face, uh, the entrepreneur, the builder of this of this community and what you're doing? And then also your mom or even, I don't know if you have a, like an outside CPA as well or accountant. How, how do you yeah, work I do all that thing? Yeah, I don't, we do now have an accountant. Um, since we do retail now, it's a little bit different because you have to pay taxes quarterly. Um, but before we moved to this location, my mother did everything. She did accounting, she did accounts receivable, payable, everything. Um, she was retired at that point. She has started back working some. So, you know, and she's a little bit up, you know, up in age. So I don't want her, you know, worrying too much. But she literally sends me texts like, hey, this has to be done. This has to be done. This has to be paid. This has to be paid. We have this on this day. Like, we have text messages. Um, we are very close. We talk all day. I'm sure she's probably going to call before I get off the Zoom call. <laughs> I'm sure. If she doesn't show up. Because well, she doesn't work far from here. And it is like... <laughs> if she shows up, we'd love to have her. Love to have her on. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely a special lady. So, um, yeah, she is operations. I'm not going to lie. When we started this business, um, and I thought of the name Organized Chaos, my mother's name is O.C. Starts with the O. My name is Kayla, starts with the K. I wanted to be okay. And the two things that matched us most is how we turned into this. I'm the chaos, she's the organized one. And um, so as far as like taxes and all of those types of things, she handles all of that. Um, how did I you vet out your accountant recently? You said you added an account recently and I don't know if you work with a business banker or someone that kind of, guides you as far as like even the real estate that you have right now, leasing um, and future ventures that you'll grow into. Mm -hmm. um, how did you vet them out and, and kind of decide on the person that you wanted to work with? As far as the banks? Yeah, banks, accountants, you know. Uh, um, okay, as far as an accountant, I uh, work with an accountant that's very well known, um, Mr. Olier, <laughs> very well known oh, in Aurora. I actually know him, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably know him. <laughs> Everybody does. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he used to come and get his hair cut at the shop I worked at for like seven or eight years. Okay. Um, so we've added him to help with taxes and, you know, those types of things. Um, so he's, like I said, a very well-known accountant. That's who we've been using. Uh, my mom kind of deals with him directly. Um, we'll meet here and there just to catch up on things and see how things are going, but I don't even um, really have a lot of communication with him personally myself because I'm always working or trying to do something or be involved in an event um, on top of the three kids I have at home. So. Yeah, uh, more to add, right? So, right. Uh, well, look, I, I mean, I, I really am gathering a lot of information just from, sh you know, what you're sharing. And I really appreciate, you know, the journey that you've been taking. You know, so tell us a little bit about kind of where you see yourself in the next two, three, four years. Um, are you looking to scale, meaning add on new stylists? Are you coming up on your lease uh, and maybe thinking about owning your own location? Uh, or I don't know, maybe you do own your own location already. How, how is that dynamic working within the, the future of your business? So that idea has kind of changed. I've been throwing, I've been brainstorming, brainstorming ever since March when Corona hit. Um, because my thought process now has to be a little different um, when it comes to overhead. Um, because at the end of the day, whether we're open or closed, if we don't own this building, we have to pay. <laughs> so I've, I've just been looking into maybe branching out to open in a different state. Um, so to maybe have more than one location. Um, also been looking at maybe becoming mobile. Um, or just going full on with products, just things that I don't have to actually have person to person contact um, to make money to do. Um, been looking at a lot of different things. Um, top of the list right now is possibly opening another location in a warmer area um, because I want my mother to retire in a warm area. 
Okay. I'm an only child, so that's my main concern is, you know, taking care of her and taking care of my children. So very noble. Depending yeah. on how things go and you know, right now I think they just they closed the restaurants and bars down here about a week ago. Our numbers are pretty high when it comes to that right now. So we're back on the edge of possibly having to close again. Um, and that's just making me brainstorm on different ideas like are there other areas that are having these kind of issues as often? Um, that may be a little cheaper, that may be a little nicer on the weather, you know, where it's not gonna give us 10 feet of snow in the winter. Um, so those are things I've been looking at. I'm hoping when you check back in with me in five years that one or all of those things have happened. <laughs> well, well, we'll try to keep it quicker than six months to a year and to always check in. And, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no, but I, I definitely wanna, wanna, wanna have you on again. So. So let's uh, let, let's transition a little bit about maybe the since you're thinking these plans, uh, let's take the journey of what some of these products. Um, you said that you make some of them on your own. Uh, do you also get uh, distribution rights to some other ones? How are you building out the product side? Uh, obviously, retail is in, in in your store, but uh, it would seem that you know with uh, the the internet and with the ability to kind of automate that side of things. How are you thinking to maybe flourish that side of things? So I, I make a lot of posts as well and um, show some of the items that I have. A lot of what I have is things that my clients will possibly use or that I use that they may want to take home with them, accessories that they can sleep with and things like that. Um, I, the products that I make, oh, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Okay. Those are private label ones that you make? No, these are the these are the main brands that I make. And then I have my own. I don't know if we have any that are already labeled right now. I just sold a bunch of them. <laughs> um, I have my own labeling and everything. So what kind the of only market? thing that I sell on a regular basis that's made by me is the oil. Okay. And, that, and uh, I guess, how, how do you produce that? Have you, do you get a co-packer or are you just doing it at home? Uh, what's the margins behind them? Like, what, what are you seeing as an advantage of doing it yourself compared to maybe uh, linking up with someone that's already doing something, but uh, maybe matches some of the style of the way that you want to do it? Because I can cater my product to each person, which means that they're going to get a better result. Oh, wow. Okay. Instead of um, making 40 and sitting them all out on the counter and they're all the same because everybody's hair is not the same. So um, I make it right in front of you when you come. How do you gather some of that data? Are you just through the questions that you're asking? How are you developing a different? Yeah, from questions that I ask for new people, I try to find out like more of your medical history, what you've done with your hair in the past, um, what issues you may have, you know, do you, are you going through menopause? Do you sweat in your head? Do you have uh, really bad dandruff? Does it itch? You know, those types of things um, are going to change my recipe for you. Um, I have a general sauce. I call it the sauce. <laughs> I have a general sauce that I make, but usually if you come in and buy it from the store, I mean, come in here to buy it. I'm going to cater it to you anyway. If you're my client, I already know what you need. So I'm going to be like, oh, I know you, it's been stressful. You're dealing with the COVID. I'm going to add some lavender because that um, helps relieve tension. I'm going to add maybe some eucalyptus um, to get your blood pressure down. Um, it just, it's just better for me to be able to do each person individually because I get the best result that way. And how do you, how do you gather these products? Is it through just a, a supplier or? Um... Yes, I use a few different suppliers. Um, I have a mixed oil that's already pre-mixed that I use from Indigo that has no water in it, but it's got like every good oil that you can think of in it. Um, I use a distributor out of Batavia or is that St. Charles? I think she might be, it might be St. Charles that I've been using for years called Pure Essentials. Um, she's the one that makes my soaps. Um, we've been using her for probably about five years now. 
Um, I buy my products in bulk from her and then I make my own recipes. Um, I use, I'm trying to think of what other, literally those are the only two distributors that I use to make my, my product. So overall, you know, cost wise, you know, it's huge based off of what I get. I mean, what I actually spend for the product as opposed to how much I can make off of it. So the margin is pretty good. It's pretty good for that, yeah. What would you say out of your sales as organized chaos as an entity, that part of your business is, is it 20%, 30%? Has it grown to 50% maybe? No, I would say the majority is still work, me working. Um, I would say maybe about 25%. Okay, that's, that's still good. I mean, yeah. obviously that's part, you know, there is some labor to it. It seems like, uh, you know, uh, making it uh, private to that person or exclusive to that person and, and, and individualized. But you could yeah. see where, you know, some of these things that you're doing could be grown into a, a little bit bigger scale. Yes. Uh, the products and, and as you get the products known or maybe you, you know, white label them to, to organized uh, chaos, you know, and just kind mm -hmm. of put your own stamp on them. Uh, you can grow. So that's really awesome. I really appreciate that. Uh, you know, so, you know, obviously one of the things that, uh, that this channel is about is about sharing, you know, marketing, about uh, organization, about uh, growth, about how you started the business. And you've kind of shared all those details. Um, you know, we like to end things with what's called, you know, CEO, right? So um, client experience is the C for CEO. Uh, employee engagement, or in your case, independent contractors and people that have worked for you, even just part time. And then mm -hmm. also the last one is uh, operational excellence. So, uh, can you share with us a little bit about just why organized chaos has the best client experience in your in your uh, opinion? I would say because it's a very relaxed, laid back environment. I did want to show you my. This is what the oils come into. Okay. So that's, that's the sauce. Is that the sauce? Yes, this is the sauce. Okay. Well, this is just the bottle, but this is the oh. container that it comes in. Um, it is a very relaxed environment. People get very comfortable, all different types of people. Um, I get clients that, you know, are CEOs of their own companies. I get clients that have worked at Verizon for 20 years. I get clients that do nonprofits. I get teenagers um it, it it's i get a lot of people that you know i just know from growing up um you know maybe people that i've gone to high school with or people that my friends have gone to high school with just all different types of people um feel comfortable here and that's what makes me i want to kind of see what it looks like at least in here um okay. oh wow those are really built out beautiful boots yeah, when we, when we opened, it was one big space, and we did all the build-out. Those are the shampoo bowls. Let me ask you something, just to, to kind of go back a little bit. When you when you first uh, negotiated it, was that part of TI, like tenant improvement, or or did you invest your own money to do a lot of that stuff? We invested about 25000 okay. into here. This was one big space. I'm going to show you the whole thing. Yeah. Can I, it, can I switch it up here? I'm going to show it to you from walking in the door. Oh, wow. So this is where we do, you know, I have all of the hair and stuff like that, shampoos and conditioners that I do not make that I sell. This is just a little lounge area. Sure. This is the area that my daughter does her lashes in over here. Oh. So we put this wall up, this wall. And then this is my station here. It's got a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> and this is my barber station. Um, the shampoo, we had to move plumbing. So we put the bowls here. This, none of that was, this wall wasn't here either. So this was just one big open space. Um, we did invest a lot, my mom mostly. <laughs> invested a lot in this business. Um, this is like our little lounge area where. Oh, for you guys? Okay. Yeah. Wow, what an awesome tour. 
Oh man, you got it all. So you know, I mean, so are you looking to kind of uh, when you think when you're thinking about that next location, are you looking to kind of duplicate the same square footage, the same look, the same style, or are you looking to maybe tweak some things? What I would probably do in my new location, because I, I, I'm here for five years. This is just my first year. I, uh, my first year just ended in August. Okay. So my lease isn't up here for another four years. So this would be another location. It, I would need it to be smaller, at least to start. Um, I'm, I'm looking into possibly Arizona as being a location. Um, I have a lot of friends and family out there that have told me for years that there's a need. But I would start small and then hopefully work up to this because this is not where I started. My last location was only a thousand square feet okay. and this one is almost 2000. And then would you be splitting your time between Arizona and here, or would you then scale up and teach someone to kind of be your prodigy uh, in what you do out here? Both. You're out there. Okay. Both. So you're, you're starting to think about maybe doing some classes and, and bringing people underneath you kind of to be apprentice of your. Right. Okay. Right. I have a few people that have worked with me in the past that I already have in mind. Um, a couple of them have had some devastating things go on in 2020. So um, I'm not trying to push anyone into anything at this point. I do want to, you know, have someone here that could do exactly everything that I do, the way that I do it, <laughs> as far as like the products that are used, knows how to make them, knows how to use them, does the research on that. Um, and I, I do want to branch out because I do eventually want to have a few locations. You know, I, I literally want to have three. I have three daughters. I want to have three locations. Awesome. Are any of them, except for, I mean, I know your oldest one is into the eyelash center. Any of them aspiring to kind of do the work that you do? Yes. Well, my middle daughter is a techie. She's more like my mom. Okay. Uh, she builds computers and stuff like that. So she can oh, wow. build apps and graphics and all that kind of stuff and then my youngest daughter is like me junior like she literally can braid like I braid right now uh, she does her own hair into like the box braids and stuff okay um, by herself so she definitely has a talent also that's why I'm like I need to have them set up <laughs> I need more than one location so that they have more than one option also as awesome. to what to do you know uh, my youngest is an eighth grader and my middle daughter is a junior in high school, so she's coming she's up, coming out, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, what, what an awesome thing, you know. And obviously, part of entrepreneurship is is hopefully that second generation coming behind you and feeling that passion, that love that you've been able to do. And right. I could already kind of envision just my mind is working while we while we've been talking about how to how to get you with that product side, how to how to help you grow on the other side. So my 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 mind is flowing. I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk <laughs> offline, but. Um, you know, I love it. So the client experience is really just about that genuine feel about how organized chaos is, the, the genuineness of what you bring to the table, the specific individuality of how you put these sauces together and, and, and uh, lotion and potions, right, to, to help them. Mm -hmm. So um, employee engagement, when you think about your barber, when you think about, um, you know, even your, your daughter in, in some ways is kind of an employee in that sense, independent contractor. Um, what are you doing differently to maybe uh, encourage others to, to come and rent booths from you and, and what would be the difference on your side? Um, to be honest, uh, it's been about four or five years. I'm, I really haven't done a lot of marketing. I let the people come to me because I'm not really, to, for me, it's not really about packing the place out or having people here. It's about the vibe here. Like I, I want to make sure that whoever does work here is somebody that fits with that relaxed vibe, with having all different types of people come in here and being comfortable with that. So I haven't done a lot of marketing when it comes to that. Usually I get my um, barbers or hairstylists from people that I know. Um, and they literally, like I had a, a guy walk in here yesterday, like, hey, can you tell me how much booth rent would be? You know, um, it's just, I like to keep the vibe a certain way um, and there's a lot of different types of people out here. So I don't, I don't really do a whole lot of marketing when it comes to that. I kind of deal with the people that I know or the people that the people I know know. Okay. So you got your tight knit group and, and when you let someone in, they're, they're about that vibe. They're about the understanding your culture. Oh, yeah. 
bring to us. So oh, yeah, I mean, I would love for somebody to come and be like, hey, I would love to work for you, this and this and that. Um, it's, it's a rare occasion because a lot of people that, especially at this time, nobody's really trying to jump out into something new with everything that's going on with COVID right now. So, and this has been all year. So, you know what I mean? Um, I believe he's been here maybe about, he, he just came after we reopened from COVID, which was, I believe, August. Was that August? Beginning of August? Oh, wow, you, shut, you guys were shut down that whole time? We were shut down for five months. Wow. Okay. From, I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah. From like end of March to May, I think I kind of like started creeping back. It was, they gave us, um, you know, kind of the word that we could, I guess the gathering size changed and they took us to a, a different level. Uh-oh. Um, oh, lost you there. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're, we lost uh, Kayla for a second here, but we'll bring her back on here on the video. Let's see here. But hey, uh, you've been learning a lot of things right now about Kayla and organized chaos and, and just the cool things about what a small business owner is going through, right? Some of her, her mind and what she's doing and how she's developing that side of things. So, um, you know, we'll wait a few seconds here. I think uh, Kayla will be able to jump on. You know, uh, leave some comments on here, and, and I know that she'll be able to uh, answer back to you. She has an uh, organized chaos. Chaos is with K-O-E-V uh, on, on uh, Instagram, uh, organizedchaos.com, and follow her on Facebook as well. Uh, and, you know, become a part of the journey here of Go for CEO as well. So uh, let's see. Oh, I think she had to hop off. But, um, Hey, thanks so much for coming on. A little bit of an abrupt, uh, 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 you know, recording today, but I uh, appreciate your time and thank you so much for visiting the Go for CEO channel. So go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment. I know Kayla would love to be able to uh, answer some of those things for you, and uh, we'll see her in about six to twelve months as well. Take care.